Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we continue training and mentoring the Manchester University Wasp Survey Team on September 29th, 2023, as we remove some invasive yellow jacket nests from the dugout structures of the campus softball field. These nests turned out to be an invasive species of yellow jacket called Vespula germanica, or German yellow jacket. In the 1970s, this species arrived in the USA from Eurasia, probably through hitching rides on international shipping vessels. In Europe, Asia, and North Africa, German yellow jackets are very beneficial native species, but here in the USA, it's unclear how badly this species of wasp is affecting our native wasp species and our ecosystems. They are likely causing a reduction of native species due to the competition for resources and their aggressive foraging behaviors. But one thing is for sure, German yellow jackets are found inside buildings more often than most other wasp species in our area here in Northeast Indiana, so they are considered a significant pest insect here for many people. Vespula germanica venom is very useful for venom immunotherapy, so we were happy to collect these wasps to freeze them and preserve their venom for that purpose. And now they can be utilized by the biomedical industry to save the lives of people with severe venom allergies. At the end of this episode, we take apart these nests to show you exactly what they look like inside. So you'll see close-up imagery of the larva, the pupae, the queen, the male drones, and the female workers, along with the inner comb structures of the nests and the outer paper envelope that covers the combs. If you find value in these videos, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to let us know you're there. And we'll keep bringing you more content throughout the 2024 season and beyond. Now let's take you back to September 29th of 2023, and we'll walk you through the entire job. All right, September 29th, 2023. I'm here with Katie from the Manchester University Wasp Survey Team. And today we're removing some wasp nests from the inside of the dugout storage areas for the softball team here on the university campus. This looks like it may be a Germanica nest. So we're going to do a removal on this entire nest, drop it into the bin, close it up, and see what we have there. And then we have another one in their other structure on the other side, so we'll go take a look at that. Also, we have a small starter nest here, so we'll deal with that one as well. That one's probably abandoned, but we're not quite sure about that. We're in another one of the university sports team's dugouts. And they have reported this very interesting looking nest. Seems to have fallen off its original location, which was probably right up here somewhere. It dropped down to where it is now at some point and then rebuilt and covered with paper. So we're going to have Katie take a specimen so we can do a species ID. Okay, so she's captured a specimen. Let's step outside and gas it and try to figure out what we have here. That should be enough. Let's see for a minute. Yeah, you see how wide the uh, arrowhead shaft mm -hmm. is? 
not the arrowhead itself, but it yeah, would be like the harpoon so. pole or the shaft of the arrow. Mm -hmm. That's much thicker on these than it is with maculophrons. That's how you can tell it's probably a Germanica. Mm -hmm. and, uh, if you look at the side of her face, it's an uninterrupted yellow band along the side that tends to indicate Germanica as well. All right, so she flew off because that's a temporary gas. Take a look around here and see where their entry hole is. There you go. So this is where the school maintenance folks are gonna have to plug that hole. We'll tape it for them in the meantime, but clearly this is their entry point. You see them flying insects in for protein. Very active nest right now. So we're gonna leave that open for now while we work on collecting because most of the foragers right now are out of the nest. Um, due to the time of day that we're here. So we'll have to vacuum up quite a few foragers as they return. So we'll leave it open for now. And over here, there's also a couple other big holes. Right here, for example. And that looks like it's had activity before, maybe rodent, maybe bird, something has pecked away there. Probably, were, probably birds. But you see how all this is chewed away? They'll have to close these up too. Okay, so quite a few coming in and out right now. This is a very active Germanica nest. So you see all this debris here from where the nest has been dropping their waste all along the wall and along this two by four. Let's see if we can watch any of them coming in. It's possible the shape of it, it's possible it's going down behind here as well. Try to tell, I'll try lifting it up here in a second. I just want to watch a couple of them come in and enter the nest. Oh, here we go. It's right there. They're coming in from that point, right on the bottom right. Yeah, I think the easiest thing to do at this point is just take the whole nest, drop it into a bin, and then just vacuum, set up the vacuum so as they come in, we'll suck them up as they get walking in, because they won't be able to tell that it's not here until they're in. It's unusual to see a nest separated like that, so I think what occurred was it was up here and up here originally, and then just dropped, and then they covered that with paper as well. Okay, can you see what you're doing on the screen now? Yes. capture most of them in one shot. It's still very active nest. You can see pupa and larva. Quite a number of very active female workers. So what we'll do later is collect these um, by just probably puncturing a hole the size of a vacuum in the top. And that'll be the easiest thing to do. But there you have most of it right there. Now for those who have not been captured yet, we're going to set up a vacuum up here. Just start sucking them up as they come in. flying outside and then they're coming around and coming back in looking for the nest which is perfect that'll make it much easier to collect them as they come in show them the door where they're flying out you see that they fly through the light and they don't really go outside and then come back around and we just vacuum 
Still have floating around in here. I'm going to hand off the back to you. Take it. Alright, so Katie's heading up to continue collecting. see here Katie's inside vacuuming and they are just coming to this point through their routine foraging behavior and she's just able to suck them up as soon as they come in so all we have to do is stand by inside that hole and that's all it's gonna take but it will take a couple hours to collect them all because a lot of them as you can see are still out and foraging very active So at this point, she's just collecting foragers as they come in from the outside. And if we go around, we can see where they're coming in still. Pretty steady stream of them. This is their entry hole right here. So if you just step out of the way, they just keep coming back and going in. And that's where she collects them. So we'll stay here for the next hour at least because there's probably hundreds of them out already out foraging today. Because we got here fairly late in the morning, so it'll take them a while to come back after they've been out foraging for insect protein and nest building material. Some of them may be nectaring.
got footage of a steady stream of them just flowing in. Great. Hopefully you're able to hit them all as they're arriving. Yeah. Meanwhile, on our nest here, they're nicely contained here. So what we'll do is uh, when we get this off site back at the field lab, we'll cut a hole in the top the size of the hose and we'll just suck them all out of there. But for now, it's a very nice way to be able to look at the workings of the nest. You see how they're tending to the larva. towards the light. Look at the bottle for a sec. See how much has been collected. Nice, they're steady coming in. Okay. So if we don't have any loose ones anywhere, this was perfect. So far, we don't have a single one that escaped us. Very steady flow right into our tube. How's it going? You okay? Yeah. Still a pretty steady flow. I, I've been timing them. I, Every I, 60 seconds we get a couple of them or more. Okay, I've been coming in here too. Good. What are you starting to see inside? This is just slowing down quite a bit. That's good. Mm -hmm. You see all the waste they leave on this shelf here. Pretty much covered the whole area. I'll give it another few minutes, then we'll wrap it up. Okay. Well, what I'd like to do is go get a couple of uh, sticky traps. I'll have you work this until I go grab them. Is that all right? Okay. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and leave a baited sticky trap up on top of the shelf. This is baited with honey which wasps always go for. So we're going to put it right here where their nest was, and hopefully they'll explore it and they'll get stuck to it as they come in. So I put a little bit of the wasp paper in the trap just to have something with their pheromone on it inside the trap. And we'll see if that draws the last few foragers that are outside. So here's our first customer for the glue trap. Not sure where it's headed to, but it went right up the wall. I think it's probably a little confused as to where its nest is. I think I'll capture that one and put it in the trap that way the pheromone it has will draw others.
So we put it in the trap. With any luck, that will draw others in. So here we have the bait wasp in the glue trap. And wasps will release a pheromone that will attract other wasps. So that's the purpose of doing this. We, we don't like to see them suffer. But the fact is we cannot have them flying in here routinely, possibly stinging the softball staff or the players. So the few that are left uh, that we are not going to be able to get because they're still out foraging and we have to take off, hopefully this glue trap will be a decent way to collect them. They're confused and looking for the nest. So hopefully eventually they'll come down and explore this trap and get caught. There, we got one now stuck. And there's a total of four of them that have come in so far. Here's the other two. Got two in the trap, two on the wall. Here they come. Yeah, we just captured another one in the trap. So they're starting to come in. So Katie has collected a number of them here. This is just the, uh, the group that was flying in, the foragers over the last hour or two. Good number of them here. So I'm glad we were able to do that. So good job. Uh, we got what we could get out of here. So now we have another group, the whole nest being frozen in the dry ice. All right, that's a wrap for today. So here we have the smaller of the two nests, actually two small nests. This one was a tiny little starter nest that had been abandoned before it was finished, as you can see here. This nest had hatched out for the season. As you can see the three layers of comb. There's one left inside that was deceased. It's not clear if that was an original or if that one found its way in there later. But this is a Vespula germanica wasp, the deceased wasp inside. Looks like everything here was able to pupate out. All the combs about the same size. Here's the paper. Typical Germanica paper with browns and greens and grays. Usually a little more firm and able to be handled without tearing up compared to macula fronds. So we'll preserve these as specimens. Here we have the Germanica nest from the softball dugouts. And we're looking for live wasps that are left over these are all frozen from the CO2. So we're going to try to collect the few that are left here.
Here you see the size of this nest. It had all these combs on it. Some were damaged a bit when we pulled it out of the cooler. But basically, all of this nest was stacked up like this. Most of these larger ones here are going to be the queen combs. Most recently made combs. And we're just sorting out the last and Trying to see which, which ones can be used for VIT. This was a one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight layer nest, somewhere in that range. Some of these are males and can't be used for VIT, but the ones that are females, they will be useful. Here's the queen, you see that? Mm -hmm. Compared to the oh, workers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she's gonna be our queen. So here you see the difference between a queen, some males, and some workers. Here's the queen, here's the male, here's the workers. So the queen yellow jacket, as you can see here, is always quite a bit larger than the workers. She's very easy to identify when you set them side by side. The male is about, halfway between the worker and the queen in size, and the male has very long, droopy antenna, so they are also pretty easy to identify. And they have an extra body segment and no stinger, so you can tell that when you work with them. So we'll just move to fast forward while we sort this out. Basically, we're separating the debris from the nest from the wasps, and then the wasps are just sent off to venom immunotherapy and they're used in biomedical labs for the purpose of creating injections that people receive if they have bad venom allergies. And after a series of injections, these people are completely immune to wasp venom, and they're able to live their lives without fear of going outside in the summertime. It's really a good thing. We recommend you look into it if you need it. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.